Hey everyone, so in my other video about my do-it-yourself at home Schlieren setup, I got a lot of questions about whether you can use a laser pointer or a laser for the setup, and I decided to make a video about how I do that here using this little green laser pointer that I have. If you haven't already, check out my other DIY Schlieren video just so you can see the basics of the setup and the basics of the theory of how to set everything up. So let's talk about how we need to change our setup based off of the fact that we have a laser pointer. So this is the laser pointer here, kind of like this thing right here. And we all know that the laser pointer emits a beam of a collimated light, so that means that the diameter is not changing. Uh, it does have a finite diameter, though. You might be able to see that here. It's a little hard to tell. But as I move this forward and backwards, you can see that it's, the diameter is not changing that much. So we have a collimated beam coming out of here, and we have it right now. If I just set this up like this, we'll have it hit the mirror, and this is not adequate because we need to have this beam uh, diverge to the diameter of the mirror, and then it will focus back down to a point. So that's what we have up here. What we need to, it to do is just like I said, we need to have it diverge to, to be able to hit the entire mirror, uh, and that way it'll focus back down to a point based off of the theory that I explained in the other setup. So the question is, what do we need to do to make it so that our laser pointer does this. So my decision for this particular setup was to use something called a plano convex lens. You can see why it's called plano convex because we have one side that is planar and the other side that is convex. And so if we take collimated light, the constant diameter light that we have from our laser pointer, it'll come into the lens and then it'll focus down to a point. And you might be asking, why does that help us? It helps us because after that focal point, which is a distance, a focal distance away from the center of the lens, the light continues to diverge like this, and that gives us our diverging light that will hit the mirror. But the question then is, what kind of plano convex lens do I buy? There's tons of them out there, there's different materials, etc. So let's take a look at how we need to size this plano convex lens. So there's two important factors when you're choosing your plano convex lens. The first is the diameter of the lens, and the second is the focal length of the lens. And so the diameter ends up not being that big of an issue because uh, the laser pointer, all it has to do is make sure that it encompasses the entire laser pointer beam, and the laser pointer beam, in my case, is only five millimeters. So really you could have a diameter of the plano convex lens that is just five millimeters, but it turns out they don't make, where I got them from, I got them from Thor Labs, they don't make a plano convex lens small enough that has a long enough focal length. So the diameter that I ended up getting was just uh, 12.7 millimeters or a half inch. Okay, so this is the schematic of what happens uh, in total from the laser pointer to the mirror. And so we have the laser pointer here, collimated beam, focusing down at a length or a distance away, FPC, so focal length of plano convex, the diameter of the beam of the laser pointer is D laser pointer. And then from that point, we know that that should be two times the focal length away from the mirror, the focal length of the mirror. So that's why this says two times focal length of the mirror away from the mirror surface, and the mirror has a uh, diameter of DM for diameter of the mirror. And so if I take this here, and I'm just gonna cut this in half, so we're only looking at the top half, then we can bring it down and we have these two similar triangles, and we know that the theta, uh, the theta coming down into here is the same as the theta going out here because it's the same beam, and so this theta is equal to this theta. And so we can solve for the focal length of the plano convex lens that we need uh, based off of the mirror that I already have. So I'm gonna do this based off of my mirror that I bought. If you have a different diameter mirror and focal length mirror, then you're gonna have to plug in your own values to figure out what focal length you're going to need for your plano convex lens, uh, along with the diameter of the laser pointer that you have, which is easy to measure. You just point the laser pointer at a ruler and you see what the uh, diameter is of the beam. And so the diameter of the mirror that I have is 75 millimeters. And this, and so I write that the diameter over two, that's just the radius, because again, I've just cut this in half, sliced it along the center plane here, and we're just looking at the top half. So that's why we have this here. Uh, the focal length of the mirror F sub M is 750 millimeters, and the diameter of the laser pointer for me is five millimeters. So again, that's why I have DLP over two because we're looking at the radius, just the top half of the schematic, and the thetas, like I said, are the same. So first we need to look at this side because I know everything, I know everything about my mirror, so I'm gonna look at this triangle over here, and we can see that the theta here is equal to the inverse tangent of this over this. So that's why I have RM, it's the radius of the mirror, which is equal to D mirror over two, over, 
two times the focal length of the mirror. And so that gives me, when I plug in my values from up there, that gives me the theta angle of 1.43 degrees. And now, since we're trying to solve for this FPC, I can use this triangle here. Now I know this theta, and I know this uh, radius of the laser pointer, so I can say that the uh, tangent of the theta angle is equal to this opposite over adjacent here. And that's why we get tan theta is equal to RLP over FPC. If we rearrange this to solve for FPC, we get the radius of the laser pointer over the tangent of the theta, and that gives us a focal length for the plano convex lens of 100 millimeters. I already have the lens that I bought, um, and that one is actually a 50 millimeters. There is a 100 millimeter focal length lens that has the correct diameter, but for some reason I got the 50 millimeter, but that just means that it ends up uh, diverging the beam a little bit farther. So you lose a little bit of that intensity because this ends up diverging a little farther to cover the uh, mirror, which you'll see when I set up my setup. And I'll just show you really quick why that my 50 millimeter focal length ends up giving me a bigger beam spot. Uh, if we take a look at this, so let's say that this is that 100 millimeters that we solve for, that would be great for the mirror that we have. If for some reason I bought that 50 millimeter focal length, it's about at half the point here. So that's where the beam will be sitting. So it has to get to the same diameter because that's what the beam diameter is. So it's going to be, it's going to look something like this here, which means that this will diverge farther. It's going to, not to scale here, but you can see that it'll diverge farther than than this, uh, than the mirror diameter. So you're going to get an, uh, an extra light going past the uh, the mirror. So if I wanted to get my beam to be exactly on the mirror surface for my particular setup, I would have chosen the 100 millimeter focal length uh, plano convex lens. So here I am online trying to find the right plano convex lens, and I went to Google and searched Thor Labs plano convex lens, and it brought me to this page for plano convex spherical lenses. There's a ton of options here, but we want something cheap that'll do for our wavelength of light light. We're looking at, uh, in my case, my red laser pointer is probably at around uh, 635 nanometers or something like that. And so we can use this NBK7. It's cheap and it'll do in the visible. So we click in here. And then again, there's tons of options, but we want something pretty uh, cheap for our little experiment. We don't need any anti-reflection coatings or anything like that. So I'm going to go to uncoated 350 to 2000 nanometers. Again, we're right in that range at our 635 or 650 nanometers, whatever it ends up being. And so I click into here. And now recall that we need to have a uh, focal length of 100 millimeters. In my case, I did 50 millimeters, but something that's uh, at least 50 or above. Otherwise, the beam's going to diverge way too much for the diameter mirror that I have. So you can see here that the diameter for this is 6 millimeters, and that's good for my 5 millimeter diameter uh, laser pointer, except for the fact that the focal lengths don't go high enough. So I need to go to the next section here. Uh, now we have the 9 millimeter still high enough, but the focal lengths don't go high enough. So I go to my half inch. Uh, optics here. And you can see that the focal lengths go all the way up to 100. And so the one that I ended up getting was this LA1213. And you can just search that also into Google, LA1213 Thor Labs, and you'll come to this website here. Uh, and so that's my 50 millimeter focal length. However, you can see there's also the 100 millimeter focal length. And uh, if you go down here and look at the pricing, they are the same price, $18.10. And so I probably should have gotten that F is equal to 100 millimeters, but there's no going back right now. And so I bought this 50 millimeter one, and we will see it in action in just a second. So here I have the uh, Plano convex lens that I bought from Thor Labs. It comes in a box like this, and you open it up, and in here is the lens, and I've taken it out. And then I took a couple pieces of masking tape and made a little holder for it like this, and it's actually in there right now. And I made sure that the, uh, the convex side is facing the laser pointer, as you could see in the diagram that I drew on the whiteboard. And so I'm able to just slide this in like this, and what I get is a laser pointer that, when it turns on, has a diverging beam like so. And you can see that when I take this, the cover off of this, and I do this, diameter is not changing. So now we can use this laser and plano convex lens in our Schlieren setup. Now there's one thing to note about this particular laser pointer, and probably on your laser pointer as well. The first thing is that there's always going to be a little bit of a speckle, and that's just inherent in laser beams. And the other one is that in this case, you can see I've diverged the beam, I have the lens on there, but you can see it's like almost cut off over here. There's a bright line in the middle, and then it's a little, it fades off on the sides, and you'll be able to see this better when I put it onto the mirror. But that's just part of the way that this laser pointer, the way that this one uh, emits light. There's actually a little, you might be able to see like a little circle there and a little defect up there, and you can see I'm just twisting the laser pointer around like this. So there is a little bit of, uh, 
you know, pretty much no light over here. So it looks like it gets cut off. And that's just something we're gonna have to deal with with the laser pointer. This is one of the reasons why I like the uh, LED point source better for these particular experiments that I do here for these cheap ones. But uh, I'll show you how to use this one anyway. So here I've mounted the laser pointer onto my tripod. And you can see that I've used a razor blade and pieces of tape to attach it to the tripod. The razor blade is because I needed a hard surface to press down on that button so I don't have to keep pushing down on it. And you can see that there's actually light coming out of the cavity there. And we can see that this is without the Plano Comics lens on. I'm gonna use a piece of toilet paper here, tissue paper, and you can see the beam like that. Diameter is not changing. And now what I can do is put my uh, the lens on here that I already have and hope the intensity doesn't change. And there, now the lens is on there. Now I brought the exposure compensation down on my video so that you can see because it was too bright before. So here, remember the Plano Convex lens is on there. Here I'm right up at that lens. There's a little bit of a circle there. As I move out, it should decrease to a point. And that's what happens right about here. It's down at a point, so it's still a little hard to see. And then it'll start diverging, as you can see here, to a bigger spot as we get towards our, our mirror. So that's what should happen. You should go from your beam diameter down to a focal point at the focal distance away, and then it should start diverging out to the bigger spot. So now I have my laser pointer set up at approximately the correct distance. I used, found the two times the focal length by using my camera like I did in the other video. And here you should be able to see the, uh, the laser spot on the mirror pretty much. You can see it's big. It's bigger than the mirror. You can see it pa extends past the extents of the mirror, and that's what we talked about on the whiteboard before based off of that 50 millimeter focal length. But that's okay. It's pretty good. You can still see the dark spot over here that I mentioned earlier. Also on the other side, it's a little bit more pronounced now because the beam spot is bigger. So that'll do, though. And now we just need to get the fine alignment to make sure that we are exactly at two times the focal length. The thing you need to make sure about now is that it is not your laser pointer edge that is the that is located at two times the focal length. You need the um, you need the focal point, so where it comes down to the focal point to be at the two times the focal length away from the mirror, which means that my laser pointer edge or the edge of the uh, plano convex lens will actually be the two times the focal length away from the mirror plus the focal length. Now I have the laser pointer uh, situated approximately at the focal length away from the mirror plus the focal length of the plano convex lens. And the way that you can check this is to get out your tissue paper again. And you can see that there are two beam spots. There's one here and then there's a faint one here because this is actually slightly transparent. So if I move this off of there, now you can see that there's a full spot. That's the return beam here. So that's the instant beam, that's the return beam. And so you need to make sure that the focal point, so I'm moving this back and forth on the instant beam, this is big, it focuses down to a point right about here. At this distance away, we need to make sure that we are also at the, uh, this is also the point where it focuses back down to the focal point there. So you can see this is bigger, and then it gets bigger again once I move it back. And so once these are both at the same location, that's how you know that you're, that it's focusing down to the point where it's two times the focal length away from the mirror. I've set up my knife edge on this stool right here and I kind of taped it to my knife edge holder and you can see that I can move it back and forth like this and it'll get it in the way of the beam. So I just need to make sure I uh, adjust this all correctly and then we can put the camera in behind and see what we get. So here I have the camera set up behind the laser beam. There's no knife edge in there yet. There's no candle in there yet. Uh, just a note of caution, don't ever look into the laser pointer or any laser beam. It's highly directed light. Uh, uh, so make sure that when you're doing this, use the live view on your camera. And so here we have it. Here is the candle that I lit and put in the uh, laser path in front of the mirror. And you can see it looks similar to our, uh, to our LED light source. So let me just blow on it real quick. Okay. And there we go. So you can see it looks something like what we had uh, from the other case. But now you have a laser doing it. There's quite a bit more intensity. Um, so again, I have my laser uh, or my exposure compensation down pretty low, um, but it works great, just uh, just like it did before.